So there's one about a girl that played soccer that made no sense to me at the time, right? And that was just kind of bizarre. And the whole thing is bizarre anyway, in general, because in general, you get these people that have, you know, come from high, uh, you know, high net worth, um, celebrities, work very well known, who are trying to get their um, young daughters, young sons into really prestigious colleges, right? But the thing that makes it very strange or very weird is the fact that these people are people of means, right? So they don't necessarily need to take, bring, don't necessarily need to, um, get their kid into this particular college right because some of the reason why a lot of people from um, disadvantaged areas like myself or people from other areas around the world would go to college is because you want to um, craft a better future for yourself right you want to give yourself the best process possible for you to make something of your life in order for you to then be of use to your family to your community or whatever it may be right that's the well, that's the kind of dream right you want to leave your shitty schools in your neighborhood and go to this prestigious school in the hope that that had college admission that college certificate would then or university certificate would then give you the ability to then go and earn x amount of money to then go you know um, increase your career prospects but when you're a, a son or a daughter of a very prominent hollywood celebrity you would think that the college admission um thing wouldn't be as important right there's a reason that if that if that was if that was the if that wasn't the case then what's the point of being the daughter of a son of a somebody that's famous right part of the part of the blessing part of the um good fortune that you have that your parent has to happen to be somebody from a hit tv show is the fact that they could potentially bring you in right they can maybe get you an internship at an agency that they work for they can potentially get you on be, to be a runner on the production set they potentially get you a walk through fucking appearance they could potentially i don't know maybe whatever it may be they've got connections that can get you inside the industry now the only problem i see that happens there is that maybe if the kid doesn't want to be in the industry right if the kid just wants to have like a regular job that might be a, a problem where you know essentially you're you're paying for the kid to go to a really expensive school just so they can, you know, earn a regular job earning them 60 grand a year, which probably isn't worth the hassle for the parents. So maybe in their kind of warped thinking, they're like, you know what, if you're going to go to college, you might as well go to the best one. Even if you don't do anything after it, you just need to have that on the certificate so that, you know, when our other celebrity peers come around our houses and see our certificates on our wall, they get impressed. But what makes it even more crazy about the whole thing is that, you know, I get the whole donating money to a library, you know, because in general, you know, other other students who have nothing to do with the scam benefit from it because, you know, they might be getting, they might get more resources, buy more books, they might improve a wing, they might get new computers, they might just give it a refurbish, a lick of paint, whatever it may be. Other students um, benefit from that. But this scandal... Um, doesn't benefit anyone apart from the family themselves, right? If anything, it cheats other kids um, that want to get into that school, especially through sports scholarships. That's the one that's really been sticking a fucking a knife down my throat. So like, how dare you, right? If you're going to have the money and you're going to cheat your way through, cool. Cheat your way through, buy a wing, um, have the thing renamed after you, build a statue, uh, refurbish a library. All right, no problem. We all benefit from it. We all get a nice garden. We all get some nice fucking lawn to go and sit down on and do our, re and do our revision all right but don't go and pretend you are somebody else to get into a sports team and then you take a scholarship away from somebody that actually could get into a team and this next example is something that kind of really uh, kind of rings home and kind of talks about this subject even more it's a topic i saw on um on inside edition ucla soccer recruit was a fake um say feds right and this is from two weeks ago let me put it up here and let's play this Absolutely One of the moms accused in the college admission scandal has made her first court appearance. She and her husband are accused of handing over hundreds of thousands of dollars in Facebook. Look at her the smile. And there's, for their there is something about people that get accused of these accusations appearing in court with those sunglasses. What are those sunglasses about? Justice Smollett had them on. This lady's got them on. Um, I think I saw a picture of Laurie McLaughlin, the one, one from the good... What was a good wife or whatever full house she had them on what's with these um sunglasses why do celebrities that um are getting in trouble have these sunglasses on when they're paying to court is this some sort of like um i don't know is everything a tv show maybe it is for them i don't know whatever it is it's fucking bizarre anyway let's continue accused of handing over hundreds of thousands of dollars in facebook stock in exchange for their daughter's admission to that ucla amazing. prosecutors say imagine handing over facebook stock if you say you can go into college Facebook stock is fucking priceless, right? There's no amount of money that you could, um, no amount of opportunity that I could, you could give me that I would give away my Facebook stock. Look what happened to that um, David Cho guy, right? The dude that um, has appeared on Joe Rogan a couple of times, right? He went to Facebook when they first launched. I think when there weren't that many staff there, maybe let's say under 100 people, Mark Zuckerberg got him in so he could paint a mural on the side of the wall inside their office. He didn't pay him in cash. He gave him Facebook stock. And then later on, when Facebook became Facebook, um, my, David Cho cashed it in. And now he's a multi-millionaire flying around the world doing whatever he wants, basically, and living a life, living his dreams. 
Right. I think yeah, anything. I don't think he sold everything. I think he sold only a portion of it, and he's like, you know, he's rich beyond his wildest dreams. So imagine a, a family giving away Facebook stock to a college. Like, how bad of a student is she to get Facebook stock given in exchange? That's fucking horrendous. And again, it's so embarrassing for the child. Your face is plastered all over the place. It's just like, ugh. And she got in as a soccer recruit, but no one can seem to remember ever seeing the girl on a soccer field. Jesus a mom Christ. leaves federal court. Wait, glasses. Look at this glass. Ivy has on. What is it? To get her daughter into <laughs> UCLA. <laughs> Davina Isaacson and her husband Bruce, a wealthy real estate developer, are the latest high-powered parents charged in the college admission scandal. Their oldest daughter, Lauren, was admitted to UCLA in 2017 as a recruit on the school's elite soccer squad. Bruins win! The number two team in America. UCLA's website lists... Nah, come on, man. Come on. You see, this is the thing that's taking the piss out of here, right? I'm not familiar with MLS football. I'm not familiar with American football, American soccer. I'm not familiar with the women's soccer. But if you're telling me UCLA is the second best college soccer team in the country and they somehow paid for her to be on a team when she doesn't play football, what the fuck, man? They could even go to like a, I don't know, a school that was in the top 10, that was in the, I don't know, top 20, like one of those kind of schools in a state that doesn't really... You know, that wouldn't really care. That would just be grateful that they got some money for the for the soccer teams. So they can buy them new kits. You took them to fucking... It's, it's equivalent to taking your kid to, I don't know, the Ajax Academy, right? And faking that and saying, yeah, they were... Uh, what do you call it? They were recruited from the, from, you know, the, the world-renowned Ajax Academy. What? Do you know how many people trial to go into the fucking Ajax Academy? Do you know how many people get in to get into the fucking Ajax Academy? And you're trying to get your kid in there so they can go to fucking university. And does she even want to go? We don't know. Does she even want to go? That's the thing. All this tassel they're doing. Does she even want to go? <gasps> Lauren as number 41, a midfielder. But she's not depicted in the team photo. Under her stats, a blank slate. Apparently, she never played in a single game at UCLA. Her profile claims she was team captain for Woodside Soccer Club, a travel team in her hometown in Northern California. Not true. But team officials say they have no record of her ever having played there. Nobody's heard of Lauren Isaacson. According to the fans, Mama Lauren's Mia. parents paid William Singer, the ringleader of the college admission scam, $250,000 in Facebook stock as a bribe to get Lauren into UCLA. They also allegedly paid another $250,000 in bribe money to get their other daughter, Audrey, into USC. As get this, a fake rowing recruit. This you have to really question, right? How dumb are these kids? Now, I get it. UCLA, USC, all these places, they're, really, they're very prestigious universities and colleges in the United States, right? They're the top tier. There's a reason why these parents are paying this amount of money to get their, their kids in there because, by and large, these are the places where... For the most part, the future leaders, the future, you know, whatever innovators are, 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 you know, in the next generation are the ones that that's where they get cultivated. Right. You want you to put your kids in the best place possible. And I get it. I don't have kids, but I can imagine if you have a child, you want to give them the best possible chance um, to succeed in life in the, for, for the future. But that to be something you have to start thinking, really kind of you have to maybe look yourself in the mirror and think to yourself. How dumb are my kids that every step along the way, along the educational journey, I have to somehow exchange money, exchange favors, invite somebody here, um, give them a meal at this expensive restaurant, give them a reservation at this expensive restaurant, buy them a car. If everything I do for this kid to get them um, further up the education ladder involves some sort of transaction, maybe my kid just isn't cut out for college. Just maybe, right? Um, or maybe they're just not doing the work as well because I think there's a part of me that's like, okay, cool. Are all these kids dumb? Probably. But is it more probably that all these kids just don't revise, just don't um, study that well and just spend their parents' money getting wasted and hanging out and just doing nothing? Probably more likely. And if that's the case, as a parent, you have to really take a long, hard look at yourself and think to yourself, you are enabling these kids to just be losers, really, isn't it? And I think this is what goes back to the whole Gary Vee situation. I remember Gary Vee saying a couple of times um, that he speaks to a lot of really rich kids who come from really wealthy families the ones that you know you would never hear of the ones that you know i don't know the dad is fucking the inventor of the of the of the screwdriver you know those kind of things where it's like you know the money is just obscene how much they've got in their family and i remember gary v saying a lot of the times where he's talking to underprivileged kids or kids from the inner city or kids that are just like you know on the come up about like you really don't want to be these rich kids right you want to be you because you come from nothing right you come from a single parent household you share a room with three of your brothers um you know you're not sure where the next meal is coming from you actually want to be you because your drive is next level compared to that dude because the other dude that comes from this family whose dad invented a screwdriver he hasn't needed to want he hasn't wanted for anything in his entire life where does his inner drive come from when everything that he needs every step of the way is provided to him and if he falls short 
His parents step in and provide assistance by bribing or by giving uh, teachers gifts. It's really, and, and that's why sometimes when you do see somebody that's rich and famous, or let's say, like, this is by example, but I pull it out of, out of my ass. See someone like a Jaden Smith, for instance, right? Out there trying to become a musician, starting these water company collaborations with, um, what's the gin company did? Was it um, Diesel? I think, was it Diesel? Um, loads of stuff that he's doing, right? He's putting stuff out there. He's trying to do his own thing. You have to really, it's really commendable because he doesn't need to do that, right? He's the son of one of the most you know famous people in the world right they have money you know for for generations and generations to come i'm assuming to i'm assuming so for somebody of that ilk to decide to really put themselves through the ringer and try to become a star in their own right right go through the rejections all that sort of stuff and the ridicule and having, having to perform in front of 20 people that ego dent whatever it may be having people ridicule your voice and say you're not good at whatever you do that takes a lot of balls a lot of cojones as um troy dini would say most people don't want to do that or should do that and I think for general, it just, it just makes me sad watching this. Because I think to myself, if I was a kid and I was from this family and I just had my life was just swimmingly and everything went as well as it could go. And you finally get to that age where suddenly your parents are having to up the ante in terms of bribes, having to really kind of go for it when it, in terms of how much they want to give in order to kind of get you where you want to get to. And then once you graduate from this college with your fake degree, you're then in the real world where there's no real more assistance your parents can give you by and large, right? They might be able to get you into... I don't know, um, a really a prestigious hedge fund, right? And get you an internship, but you might have to perform. You're gonna have to perform eventually, right? You're gonna work for somebody that does, doesn't give a shit about your family, and then you get fired. Then you're. It's just it. It, it for me, it kind of represents um the problem with affirmative action. You know where they were like, you know, purposely, they, you know, they were trying to strategically get people in from different backgrounds, ethnicities, and races to take uh, be part of some university. I don't know Oxford, Cambridge, wherever maybe, or some places in the United States. The issue I had with that was for the most part, um, they would lower the threshold of admission, right? So if the regular students needed a certain number of points to get in. For the person that came from a you know a disadvantaged area, they would lower it by a few points or maybe by half, and that would only really be a disservice to the person that got in, right? For that you know for that person that happened to come from a disadvantaged area, because then now you're not competing on an even playing field. You're having to play catch up with people who are already in the college who are, are operating at a higher level, and and they know you're only there because you come from a poor neighborhood or some shit. I don't think that's the right way to go about things. If anything, you might you should have a quota. You might should have an allocation for people who come from neighborhoods that aren't necessarily have the ability to go in there. Maybe a full scholarship, whatever it may be. But they should have the same level of they should have the same entry crime as everyone else. So that when you finally are in the class, yes, you might have got the opportunity to take the test because you're from a single parent household, but you still have to take the same entrance exam as everybody else. But in general, I just I just don't. It's just for, it must be horrible to be a, a a son or a daughter of a rich parent. And having to go through all this nonsense and your parents fucking dragging you kicking and screaming to a university that you don't even want to go to fobbing your records putting photoshopping your face on other people's bodies and shit and then it all exploding like this and you being on the cover of all these news articles it must be horrendous same scheme actress Lori Loughlin allegedly used to get her two daughters into USC. The scandal has legit college rowers up in arms. We caught up with the young women of the Long Beach State women's rowing team. They are elite athletes who have the grit to get up at 5 a.m. Exactly. and train three hours every day before class. They say they are infuriated that any student would fake credentials to get into a top school. We know how hard it is to go out there and give your all every race. At five in the morning. And, so no <laughs> and this goes at home. Who thinks that they can just fake their way through that? I think it's ridiculous that people think they have to resort to that. At the time of the arrest, the Isaacsons reportedly were in. It's just sad, though, isn't it? Really, it's just sad, I think, in general. It's just sad because I know. I remember when I was in. I was, when I used to go to church and shit, there was this. Um, there was this dude I used to go to church with. Who happened to be really good at um happened to be really good at what? What was I gonna say to you? Yeah, who happened to be really good at um at basketball, right? He had to be really good at basketball. He was a musician too, you know, just a, 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 a generally a cool dude. And I remember it being a thing where like his parents were trying to get him to into this prestigious university. I forgot which one he went to. He went to a really really good one. And he obviously didn't want to go, right? He obviously had ambitions to become like a, you know, a star, an entertainer, whatever it may be. But his parents have other other aspirations for him. And it was funny because his parents were like, you know, preachers in this church. 
and they'd get up every Sunday at the at the pulpit and they'd preach this message about, oh, you should never force your kids to do what they don't want to do, support their dreams. But at the same on, on the same hand, they'd be fucking hypocrites because they'd be forcing their kids to go to college when they weren't really they weren't necessarily academically gifted and it didn't, and it didn't necessarily care, right? That was a problem. I don't think again, I wouldn't say academically gifted. They weren't academically gifted for the level that their parents were trying to get them to, right? Because I think by and large most parents think their kids are like geniuses, right? They think your kid's a little Einstein when he's not, right? So you want to give your child the best possible opportunity to, you know, become the boy genius, girl genius that you want them to. So I guess when you're a rich parent, you have this weird sense of sense of self that your kid is a lot smarter than they are when they're not. You try to get them to college that they probably have no business being in. And if they should go to one, maybe just go to one a little bit lower and still, and then you can still, you know, give them a little deal like, hey, I still want, you have to go to university. This is no fucking, um, um, debate in my house you live in my house you're under my rules but we're going to take you to this college that has a really good plan has a really good educational uh, system and also a good sports thing or entertainment thing they've got a studio there so you can balance both things so you can see what you want to do right give it two years or whatever it may be and then see what you say to me and we'll come back later cool but instead these parents know they put you into a fucking college you know doing fucking astrophysics or uh, whatever it may be or you know um economics or something that it way something that really did firm that really um, requires um, some kind of you know acumen and some kind of ability to do or some kind of desire to learn to get over the hump to kind of um, uh, not get pushed back not get let not get uh, put off by your setbacks they didn't do that they forced him to go to college he ended up going there he ended up graduating in the end you know by the skin of his teeth but he, his whole dream of playing basketball or being an entertainer was completely eradicated right his parents just threw that out the window and it was super sad because you saw that story repeated again and again in the end. Like a couple of other boys, um, another one of my friends called, um, or that, that I knew back in the day called Victor R.I.P. He, he passed away a few years ago. He was the same. He was really, really talented at football. Extremely talented at football. Really talented at football. Uh, oddly, uh, an extremely good dancer too whenever we had a school disco. And his parents were just not having it in terms of like letting him achieve his dreams or go for it. They just wouldn't have, let, let, let him do it. So then he ended up putting him in the college end up um, putting him into university to do his thing and, he, and that dream of him going to university died and then a few years later or a couple of years later he passed away too now again I, you know I'm, I'm, in, I'm in no way shape or form blaming the parents for him passing away but it's just a shame to have a kid and then to have them have a dream and then you specifically want them to do another dream it's kind of akin to all those mothers you saw on the fi finding leaving neverland documentary right a lot of people were blaming like me were blaming the parents for being fucking scumbags but a lot of it had to do with the parents living their dreams through their kids right living vicariously through them like because they were failed entertainers because they didn't really achieve their dreams they're trying to do everything possible to make their child do it as well and sometimes the kid doesn't even want to do it they're just doing it because they get to spend time with their mom they get to spend time with their dad you know what i mean or they make or they like the feeling of how happy it makes their parents feel but it's not necessarily their dream and it usually does happen between the ages of like you know 12 to 17 when the kid starts to become a you know their own person have their own personality they suddenly start to pull away from that you know um entertainment industry and start to do other things and rebel and then the relationship breaks down it's just loads of victims are um happen to fall along the way but again this is a fucking horrible scandal I feel sorry for the kids, to be honest. And yeah, imagine that, man. Imagine trying to fake your kid to get into, a, what, the second best soccer school. <laughs> soccer University in the whole of the United States. She doesn't even play soccer. That is absolutely horrible. But ugh, I don't know. I don't know, man. The things people do for their parents is just insane.